Although um, there have not been many new uh, approvals in the treatment of high risk MDS, uh, you know, we really are starting to evolve in how we approach uh, that disease entity. Um, both in clinical trials, but also just in our greater understanding of the molecular behavior of a disease and also our understanding of um, some of the dynamics of disease that we've uh, somewhat borrowed from AML. I think that for many patients with MDS, uh, the what was known before is uh, all the more clear that transplant candidacy um, is a critical first step in assessing a patient. You know, for us, we really try to have uh, almost all of our patients assessed by our transplant team because um, numeric age, for instance, is much less a barrier than it was in the past. Um, it's much more important to uh, give patients a chance for evaluation um, because that's really the best long-term uh, treatment for uh, most patients with MDS. Uh, for those that aren't transplant candidates, uh, you know, we're still using hypomethylene agents primarily. And even for those who are and may need some degree of cytoreduction reduction before. I think there is a little bit of nuance that's starting to emerge in MDS. Uh, one of those areas is molecularly driven therapies. Now, really, we only have those that are um, largely more studied in AML, but the few patients with MDS with a mutation in IDH1, IDH2, or FLT3, Sometimes those can be incorporated into early or later lines of therapy. And then thinking about some disease entities as perhaps being more AML-like, I think a good example is NPM1 mutations in MDS. Again, although uncommon, they do respond very well to AML-like therapies, such as induction or uh, isocytidine and venetoclax. And so while I determine whether or not somebody is a transplant candidate, and prepare them for that undertaking. Um, I'm also often thinking about some degree of treatment, hypomethylating agents being our standard backbone, but with a lot more variation, perhaps depending on the molecular uh, profile and also on the intent of the treatment for the patient. Um, I think what we hope will happen is that that becomes even further nuanced if we get some agents that have for instance, a uh, clear improvement in overall response rate compared to azacitidine monotherapy, perhaps we'll want to get better response before something like a transplant or a survival benefit compared to azacitidine that would also influence how we uh, treat patients. And I'm hoping that some of the phase three studies that are underway will um, shed light on possible future avenues to that regard.